this video is going to be a tad bit longer than the previous one. By a tad bit, I mean 20 minutes longer. Uh, I just had to jam a bunch of cats into it, so I'm just going to do this voiceover while we're in the speed paint. Uh, welcome back. If you're new, I'd recommend going and checking out the other one. Most of the references happened here as it was all really out of order and my screen recording wasn't working, so apologies for that. But here we have the warriors and the leaders and everybody else I didn't cover in the last video, which is a lot of cats. So prepare yourselves mentally. Uh, a few of the backstories goes into some of the other characters, which is why I wanted you to read the rest. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. Fine by me. I don't care. Uh, the leader, deputy, and medicine cat, I all drew before making this. And before even thinking of making this, I just wanted to draw them for shits and giggles. But I did do a redesign for the leader and the medicine cat, and, and the medicine cat and deputy will be explained on their own terms. This is Tangled Star, the clan's leader and resident anarchist. Her mother was the previous leader, and after being thrown off cliffs, mistreated, and bullied by her, she eventually stood up for herself and led a revolt against her mother, throwing her out of the clan and uniting her clanmates together. Since then, she's come out of her shell and was elected to be the leader. She holds that honor high above her head and will do anything to make sure the clanmates are happy with their lives. She's the powerhouse of the clan, and although she doesn't look it, she's the best fighter in Gore's clan after Silverclaw retired. She suffered through this even more now that her mother joined another clan and is now deputy. She won't falter and she won't mess up. It's not what she's telling herself in her head, it's what the clanmates are telling each other. Tangled Star doesn't make mistakes, and if she does, she turns it into a learning opportunity for everyone. Her apprentice is Hawkpaw. His energy and spunk inspired her, and she wanted to keep a close eye on him. So now, she mentors him. And if anything, her tough love and challenging lessons make Hawkpaw even more energetic. She's out there, she's awesome, and the whole clan would throw themselves off a cliff for her. Granted, she would never let them, as she would want to do it first. Dewpetal is the clan's deputy, and a powerful, intimidating one at that. Cats often get the wrong idea about her when they look at her because of how intimidating and naturally angry she looks. When in reality, she's a spunky, matter-of-fact, energetic powerhouse with the claws to defend it. Tangled Star saw her and knew immediately the young warrior was skilled enough to intimidate the other clans to stay at bay. Dewpetal loves to play the stereotype and uses it to defend her clan. When the rest of her clan speak their mind, she shows it. And honestly, she really doesn't have a choice. She's mute. That doesn't stop her at all, though. Her communication in battle is superb, and she's the one to lead hunting patrols when targeting hawks. The other clan see her as a superior warrior, which is the main reason Tangled Star picked her as leader. She's great at keeping up clan expectations and keeping other clans off their territory. The medicine cat is Weaselfoot. The generator left him pretty open-ended, so I made him a tiny little stubby man. Being a medicine cat in Gorse Clan demands a lot of respect. Not only because they have to heal warriors out fighting hawks on the weekly, they have to do a lot more jobs than other medicine cats might. And Weaselfoot is no exception. He's got great endurance and a keen eye for organization. He's a chaotic perfectionist that wants to make everything look aesthetic. When he's not taking feathers out of prey or healing the warriors, he's out organizing the med den to spotless perfection. It's no wonder he never had an apprentice, he's simply too flamboyant and the young cats are easily overwhelmed. He's a kind soul and reliable secret keeper. If you're willing to sit with him, he's a good friend for, to everyone in the clan, and is probably the first one anyone goes to with problems, because they know he'll keep his mouth shut and never get involved. I got really tired of drawing cats and I wanted to draw a baby, so I turned one of the queens into his kit. The generator had a lost kit in the events, and although I'm not fond of the events, I kept the idea. Kevin and his mate Hotbush, who you'll meet again later, adopted the helpless little thing after a minor flood. They named her Seed Kit, and the two love her more than anything in the world.
The one I'm drawing right now is Badger Paw, one of the three claws. She got the name Badger Paw because of the strange markings on her face resembling the same thing badgers have. She's a powerful fighter, and although she's a tad small like her brothers, she's expected to get a big growth spurt soon. Her mentor, Miss Mass, is certain that her skills will become very useful. Badger Paw just enjoys the small things in life. Trees, plants, food, anything. She lives in the moment and is content with just that. As far as her sharp tongue, it only is seen when her brothers are involved. She doesn't particularly like any of the other clans, which causes a big issues during gatherings, so most of the time she'll stay back and watch the camp. She doesn't mind it, and she'd honestly rather stay back than have to deal with all the other clan's issues and whining and apprentices. But this might start changing soon, as she just recently met another cat on their territory. Exceptions are made for her defensive shell on the outsiders, and who knows what might happen with this new strange cat. It was actually uh, right about here I started to fix up one of the old warriors I drew uh, in the later video you might recognize. This little man here is Hotbush, probably my favorite in the clan, with the exception of one of the other cats. He's deaf, but he doesn't let that stop him. Over time, he's learned how to communicate with others and has even become adept at speaking normally. He's a brilliant lip reader and there's not a lot of secrets you can keep from him. His ears were torn off on multiple occasions, as he uses them to the defend the rest of his body. It hurts, but he'd rather lose something he doesn't use than lose some fur on his neck. He's a child at heart and loves to spend time in the nursery helping the queens and kings get settled. He's not a permanent king by any means, but he loves to help. He was never able to have kids as his mate, Weaselfoot, is also a tom. And of course all changed when Seed Kid came into the mix. He was on the patrol that found the sick kit and immediately offered to father it since there were no nursing queens at the time. He's not at all skilled in medicine, but often helps his mate in the medicine den watching Seed Kit and removing feathers from prey. He's pretty close friends with Dew Petal, as she was the one who showed him body commands as a kit when she was only an apprentice. Granted, never as close to him as Sora Tooth. She went from being a mentor to a personal workout buddy. They're always the first ones to awake and go on runs as a way to speed through patrol. Flippaw is the last of the three claws, and probably the one with the most spunk. He snaps at everyone who dares say his siblings aren't fit for something. He's the one that gets angry about Renpaw being asked to become a medap. Every word that comes out of his, this little man's mouth is sarcasm. Every day is opposite day with him, and he enjoys the show he gives. He's the smallest of the three, and normally uses that to keep lower to the ground for stealth, rather than hunting or fighting like the others. 
He might be his clan's resident Jay Feather, but he enjoys every minute of it and really plays into the stereotype like everybody else does. He might seem arrogant and annoyed at everything, but he does like his life and he really appreciates his siblings and the comfort they give him. Hawkpaw is the match that lit the explosion. He's only a bit younger than the Three Claws and is even considered their kin at this point, even though they're not genetically related. He's the only kid that wasn't hurt in the hawk attack and the only apprentice without a scar. This is simply unforgivable in his mind. Scars are the coolest thing ever, and it's his life goal to get one. He admires the leader more than anyone in the clan and is so beyond happy that he gets to be mentored by her. He's always throwing himself at danger, giving even the smallest reason. Even so, he's thrilled with the adrenaline that comes from every day. All he really ever needed is a spark of energy to be happy and makes everyone else happy around him. He might be obnoxious and uncontrollable and honestly the most crazy cat you can ever imagine, but somehow his energy can inspire the entire clan. He's probably my favorite, I just love the crazy characters that I can throw off cliffs for plot points without having to explain why because it's something they would do unironically. He's Doshine, but nobody really knows who the mother is, so they all just assume it was either a rogue or some cat. But nobody stepped up to the plate, so everybody assumes that whoever it was was probably taken in one of the floods.
Starling Stone was described as a long-haired, light-colored she-cat, so I didn't really have a lot to go off of. I googled some random cat patterns and just kind of ran with it, so, you know, nothing super fleshed out. She's Hotbush's sister and cousin to Tangled Star. She earned her name from the pebble-like markings on her fur and how she's movable as a rock. Her defensive skill is unmatched and the one who's able to sit through anything. Just like her brother, she loves kits and apprentices. She's always wanted to be a mom, but never had a mate. Even so, she's the one everyone goes to for romance advice. Her apprentice, Renpot, is super intimidated by how social and friendly he is, but she knows him well and uses his abilities to bring out his spirit so that she can better communicate with him. As much as she loves Renpa and other apprentices, she hates being a mentor. Too much work, too many long days, has to wake up too early, she just wants to hug them and watch them be precious little children. I decided to draw Sandgaze and Appleshine together. They're littermates and practically inseparable. As the second liver, litter of silver, ugh. as the second litter of silver claws kits, they have a reputation for chaos. As apprentices, the two would pout if they couldn't train together. So after a while, their mentors use that to their advantage. They are the only two in the clan who are proficient in catching rabbits and have developed their own fighting style. Well, multiple actually. They created a bunch of techniques that relies on fighting together, and it's a wonder that Sandgay has ever had a mate since his sister was always good enough for him. Appleshine is always ready to go along with whatever Sandgay wants to do, and Sandgay is happy to go along with whatever Appleshine wants to do. So most of the time they just hang out together and hunt. They're the only warriors who haven't had apprentices yet, and are both excited to get one once Hailpad has her kids.
Hal Pad is the clan's only queen and is super close to giving birth. She is by no means good with kits, the exact polar opposite to Starling Stone. She can train them, she can aid them, but she can't show maternal gestures. This is especially a problem because Weaselfoot is expecting her to have six, the largest litter in moons. Her mate, Sandgaze, is likely not the best father either. He's more like the crazy uncle, and they're not close mates, more like an awkward team rom-com. They didn't expect to have kids either. He's working on it, though, and is trying his best to be a better mate, while the battle-ready bazooka reincarnated as a cat is itching to get out of the nursery. She's a real good hawk fighter, and her name was given to her because the second before you hear her paws thundering towards you, you're already on the ground. A bit of a spot-on name, but it was given to her by her father, the leader before Tangle's star's mother. Although she isn't planning on staying being a queen, as Sandgaze is already volunteering to be the one to watch the kits, he knows that this would probably be the best option, as Hailpad would probably eat the kits before spending six more moons in the nursery. Now, probably the most awaited cat ever, the man, the myth, the legend, Silverclaw. He's not last on the list, but he's probably the most prominent character in this clan. It's a wonder he never became leader. He's the biggest cat in the clan, even considering his age and his claws, too. Which is, of course, how he earned his name. He's the clan's big ol' Uno reverse card turned bluff. Back in his glory days, he was the strongest warrior in all the clans. He could shoulder off three other warriors and send them flying. Now he's all fluff. He might still look absolutely ginormous, but under all that fur, he's skin and bones. He stayed a warrior for much longer than he should have, and only retired after almost breaking his hind leg. The other clans still only see him as a big monster, but the clan knows he needs a lot of help keeping meat on his bones. That never tainted his spirit, though. He's lived his life, and he secretly enjoys the visits and demands to bet his fur by the younger cats. He was Tangled Star's right hand in the revolt against their previous leader, but he couldn't last too long. He's plenty happy now and goes around fortifying the camp walls whenever he gets too bored, or telling stories to some of the kits that are too scared to walk up to him.
The final cat in this clan is Swift Pelt. He joined alongside with Miss Mask after the ro- Mist Mask. Oh my god, I need to change her name. It is way too hard to say. Anyway, he joined after the rogue attack. He's a talented tracker, but was always very wary of the clan. He would do the bare minimum and watch Miss Mask, Mist Mask succeed. Ah! Uh, they're not related, but he treats her like kin. All he ever really wanted was a better life for her, and he's happy they don't live in the bloodbath that there was the rogue group. He was born and raised there, and for most of his life, he had to fight for food, lie, and be cautious of others. He only ever trusted Miss Mass because she gave him some prey when she was only a weak little kit. He saw all the innocence in her and defended her while everyone else saw her as a weak link since she was only a kit. He fought the clan cats for the territory because he was scared what would happen to him if he didn't. Once he realized the clan could protect him and Miss Mass, he joined and begged her to come too. They both live much better lives now, and he still goes out with patrols just to admire the fresh air and enjoy some time with her. Well, that's the lot. Hope you like these little weird cat creatures. I'm going to be doing three more, so look forward to that. Apologies, Hawkpaw is blurry. I add to screen chat because the layer was deleted. Generator I used is in the description if you want to check it out. And I'll catch you later.